Hello everyone and welcome to the final video of the first game of our Ace Attorney Let's Play. That's right, we're going to be finishing up this case finally today. It has been a long journey, but we've made it to the final part of the final trial and we're going to get Gant found guilty with Edgeworth on our side because Edgeworth is helping us and I love that so much. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but yeah, it's so crazy. I can't believe this is the final one. I'm not sad like I usually am, but with like most Let's Plays because you know, next week, expect the first video of the second game, okay? We're just going straight in to the let's play of the second game after this, so yay! But yeah, last time we questioned Gant, and we had him cornered, and then he was just like, peace, bye, I'm going to eat, and he had this really scary sprite. Um, yeah, I just, I really hate him. And now we're gonna be questioning Lana this time, <laughs> but Gant threatened her and was like, hey, if you go against me, I'll make sure Lana's found guilty, which, or not Lana, Emma, which is also basically just him admitting his guilt. But also, I don't really know why it matters anymore because we already learned the truth. Okay, it's not like it's some mystery. Also, what does it matter if he's in jail? He can't do anything. So yeah, we'll see how this goes. <laughs> Lana, please don't make this difficult. I'm begging you. <sighs> but okay, let's just jump into it because I have a feeling this might be a longer one since it's the, fu the finale. Welcome back. Now then, will the defendant, Ms. Lana Skye, please take the stand? This trial never ends. Hurry it up, I'm going to be late for Mahjong. Ms. Lana Skye, you're the chief prosecutor. I'm sure you're aware of what is required of you. But Mr. Edgeworth, you already know everything. You know all that I've done these past two years. Please provide the court with your testimony, Miss Sky. And remember, you are under oath. We want to hear the truth. I don't know that why it even matters, though, because no one in this court ever tells the truth. Even people who don't commit crimes just lie for no reason. They just do it for funsies. Do y'all remember Lotta Hart? She lied for no good reason. She just wanted to be in a trial. No one ever gets punished for that. Of course, the truth. Lana, no matter what happens, I'll always be your sister. Come on, Lana. Now then, your testimony, if you will. First, tell us about your relationship with Chief Gant. Everything hinges on your testimony. You're the only chance we have to get to Gant. To get to Gant. Get to Gant. Gant and the Fabrication. My favorite book. I worked alongside Gant for years. There's no truth to this blackmail theory. I fabricated the evidence two years ago all by myself. Okay, you're already under oath lied. <laughs> when I found Prosecutor Marshall's body, I rearranged the crime scene. My only motivation was to get Dark convicted. It had nothing to do with Emma. Really now? <laughs> because, uh, that doesn't sound quite right. Why would you want to get him convicted and just like not care about what happened with Emma? Mm, are you sure about this testimony? I literally just said that you are under oath. Your Honor, I'm confessing to a capital offense. Of course I'm sure. But Lana... Mm -mm. If this is true, then that means Chief Gant has nothing to do with this. That's what I've been telling you from the beginning. Please, Mr. Wright, you've got to help her. She's sacrificing herself because of me. But what if she's telling the truth? She just did it again! She's not. I know my own sister. She, I, she just read my mind. She, I just, we, we saw that in real time, guys. I thought that, what if she's telling the truth and she said, she's not. Are we not going to acknowledge this? We, this is the final video. This is the final part. And we've not acknowledged the fact that she's reading my mind. Whenever she speaks stiffly like that, she's hiding something inside. Deep down, she's really screaming in agony. Yeah, this is no time to start second guessing myself. Can you maybe second guess the fact that you didn't say that out loud? We're really not going to acknowledge this, are we? Uh, the defense may now begin its cross-examination. I swear to God, if this means nothing, <laughs> her mind reading. Okay, I'm going to press on. Not that. Um... Maybe I'm, th I'm thinking this one though. 
You say you did this all by yourself. Yes. Would you mind telling us what you found when you arrived at the crime scene? It seems I was the first person to discover the scene. The broken prosecutor award knife was stuck in the victim's body. What? That doesn't make any sense, Lana. But Prosecutor Marshall died from an unfortunate accident. That's only a situation you dreamed was possible. God dang it. The reality is, it wasn't my sister who took the prosecutor's life. Fantasize all you want, Mr. Wright, but I'll never change this statement. Lana, Emma literally just admitted to me before this trial started that she remembered it. You mean Prosecutor Marshall wound up being killed by Doc? Something like that. If that is so, what happened to the other murder weapon? Doc was carrying a switchblade knife. Oh, that was lying on the floor a little distance away. It was probably knocked away in the struggle. That's not how it went down. She's trying to cover up her lies with more lies. All just to protect me. You did it again. You just did it again. This game. So, when you found the scene like this, what did you do? After all, this is what everything boils down to. Yes. I broke off the tip of Dark's knife, planted it inside the wound, then moved the body. How the heck would you have done that? <laughs> you planted the tip of... Okay. And then you moved the body. But why? Why would you do that? I didn't get to finish reading my own line. You of all people should know, Edgeworth. You've always had a good head on your shoulders. My head isn't that bad, but maybe I ought to ask for the sake of the others. <laughs> yeah. What are you guys talking about? Um, why did you put- no, why did you move the body? When you showed up to the scene, where exactly was the victim's body? It was where you deduced it was, by Chief Gant's desk. But the body was found by your desk. Why did you move it there? The reason for that is simple. Let's have the witness explain this in more detail. The reason Miss Sky moved the body. Pieces of the jar that shattered during the events threatened my plan. Uh. Pieces of the jar that shattered during the events threatened my plan. What does that even mean? I'm gonna present the jar on that because she's bringing it up. Miss Guy, I understand how you feel. You committed that crime two years ago to protect your sister. You mean the forgery at the scene where Neil Marshall was murdered? If that truth were to be exposed now, the past two years of your life will have been in vain. Even so, I am compelled to bring to everyone's attention a significant contradiction within your testimony. Contradiction in my testimony? You justified, and I quote, the pieces of the jar that shattered during the events threatened my plan. When would the jar have, like, shattered? Like, what, what does that even mean? That's right. Do you have a problem with that? It's simple oversight, really. You see, a message was written on the jar with the victim's blood. <laughs> Emma! Why would, why would the victim write that if it wasn't her? Yes, the prosecutor must have written, in, written it in his final moments. Exactly so. And this is where the contradiction lies. In order for the victim to be able to write this mes his message on the jar, it must not have been broken before he died. Ah. He couldn't have written Emma's name on a shattered jar. No, he could not. Order, order. Your Honor, it would appear more information is needed in regard to this jar and its bloody message. We may be missing something critical here. Something critical? Chief Prosecutor, it seems you are as in the dark as we are, but the truth towards wh which we're headed. What? Just tell us exactly what you saw. We'll piece together the information to arrive at the truth. 
Very well. The witness may now continue her testimony. Jar and message in, a, in blood. I immediately noticed the blood traces on the jar, but it was dark in the room and I didn't have time to check it out. To be safe, I wiped away the blood. The fragments were large, so I'm sure I got them all. But there was, there was the missing one, wasn't there? All I could think about was wiping them clean before they were dis discovered. You mean you were the one who wiped away the message in blood? I wasn't chief prosecutor at the time. She didn't think Dark was the real murderer. That's why she tried to erase the real evidence. Very well. The defense may now begin its cross-examination. Okay, we're gonna present the jar again, I think, on this one. You're sure that you got them all? No, wait, I didn't want to press. I pressed and I didn't want to. <laughs> Whoops. Why? In the last video too, I kept mixing up the press and the present buttons. But how could you see with the power out? It should have been pitch black in that office. The detective is always prepared, Mr. Wright. Even now, I always carry a pocket light and a camera with me. You and I carry a bottle of emergency luminol wherever I go. I know, Emma. I never miss anything. I got every last piece. Okay, that's not... <sighs> this. I want to present... The jar. Well, now I know... I feel like it is this statement. <laughs> I guess I know for a fact that it's gotta be presented now. <laughs> Miss Guy, I believe this jar conceals a truth even you were unaware of. What? We found the final piece of this jar in Chief Gant's safe. In the Chief's safe? But how? I knew it. She really didn't know. There's something even more disturbing about that final piece. There was... still blood on it. But the witness just testified that she gathered every last piece and wiped the blood off of them. Look, when we were trying to put that jar together with gumshoe, there was a piece missing. Yes, which leaves us with only one explanation. On the night Prosecutor Marshall was murdered, you were not the first one to show up on the scene. Oh. Chief Gant got there before you. Oh. Interesting. But couldn't the defendant have simply missed a piece? I'm afraid that's unlikely. The pieces are too big for anyone to miss, let alone an ace detective. That may well be, but everyone makes mistakes. Even I wa once wasted an entire day looking for my dentures. They were in my mouth all along. Ha! Can you believe that? Have you forgotten, Your Honor? Why does the judge keep saying things now that, like, <laughs> I would say for him? Though I probably wouldn't have said dentures. I would have said something, like, way more obscure. Like, he was missing his... I, I don't even know. His... Flintstone gummies. When this witness arrived at the scene, the jar was already broken. Oh, that. There's no way a name could have been written on the, a shattered jar. Another person discovered the scene prior to the witness. I hope you're not implying this person was Chief Gant at the time he was, at the time he was looking for Dark downstairs. Besides, even if he was there first, why would he break the jar? The question is, if he did arrive there first, why did he hide the fact for two years? Oh my god. Well, Your Honor, can you answer us that? No. Ah. No. My brain hurts. I can't believe Chief Gant would do such a thing. Judge is so upset. Wait, I'm not the one on trial here. Why are you all yelling at me? Demon Gant arrived at the crime scene prior to the witness. He proceeded to break the jar and purposefully hid one of the broken pieces. Question, what is this action called? Fabrication of evidence. But why would Chief Gant do that? In light of what happened afterwards, isn't it clear? What happened afterwards? Discovering the scene, Lana Skye believed her sister Emma killed the victim. 
Determined to help her sister, she sought Gant's aid. Lending her his aid, Gant helped her create evidence that incriminated Dark. Sparing Emma, and therein lies the reason. The reason why Miss Skye became Chief's puppet. Girl, you bit so hard there was blood. Ouch. Your hand's already injured. No, I, I did it on my own. Please, sis, stop trying to protect the chief. I I can't watch you suffer anymore for my, for my sake. No, you didn't. It wasn't you, Emma. You didn't kill anyone. Don't believe anything Mr. Wright says. Defense attorneys make up their most, the most foul lies to defend their clients. Foul lies? Imagine that coming from my own client. Mm -mm. Mm. I guess you do seem the type who likes to twist the truth. Judge, when have I ever done that? How many times have I found the right criminal? You should trust me by now. You always say how much you love me. Wait a minute. What if... We're still smack dab in the middle of Gant's trap. Is there something else? Is something wrong, Mr. Wright? Did Emma not really commit the murder? I mean, she remembers pushing him. But was it still, like, somehow Gant again? Lana, maybe right after all. She, Emma didn't do it. Was this Gant too? What do you mean, Wright? So you do tell foul lies then, Mr. Wright? Miss Guy, please testify once more. But if evidence was fabricated behind your back, then Emma's accidental killing of Prosecutor Marshall might also be a lie. But I do remember knocking over Mr. Marshall. But you don't remember him dying. Miss Sky, if you will. I I can't. So then maybe Gant is the one who wrote Emma's name on the jar. Because I don't know, I still find it weird that Neil would do that. There's nothing to be afraid of anymore. This cross-examination may not change a thing. However, there is a possibility that it will, if you tell the truth. Very well. I'll testify about what I really saw. Thank you. All right, the witness may testify once more for the final time. Actual crime scene. Finally the truth out of you. When I arrived, I found Mr. Marshall's body impaled on that suit of armor's sword. Okay. Emma and Dark were lying unconscious on the floor nearby. When I saw that had happened, I thought she did it. That's why I erased all the evidence that linked her to the murder. I had Chief Gant help me remove the body from the sword and carry it. But if it all really was a fabrication, Emma might, have, might, Emma might be innocent. Unbelievable! The body was impaled on the armor's sword. You were the only one who saw that. If only you had proof. Actually, I do have proof. I gave it to Mr. Wright just this morning. The evidence law book? What? To me? It's a picture book of the crime scene as I encountered it. I thought it might be needed. But I don't remember receiving a picture like that. Lana must have known. See, Mr. Wright, she really does have faith in you. Very well, Mr. Wright. Please present this picture. I don't remember receiving any pictures from Lana. Lana said she gave it to you this morning, right? I seem to remember getting something from her then. Let's check that evidence again. There must be a picture in there somewhere. Yeah, it must be... There must be more to it. It meets the eye? Oh, oh. <laughs> well, dang. I sure missed that. I mean, like, I, I probably wasn't able to see it until this moment anyway, but, like... The, the fact that Phoenix didn't notice that in there is kind of funny. Hey, there's a picture here. Oh, oh my. This is the actual crime scene. 
No other detective saw the crime scene like this because I contacted criminal affairs only after I re had rearranged everything. Crime scene photo from the case two years ago. Oh, taken. <laughs> I forgot the word taken. <gasps> Mr. Wright, that piece cut out from the vest. Could that be? Uh, huh? You're talking about the cloth that has your fingerprints on it? The cloth we found inside Chief Gant's safe. Is that where you pushed him? What's this? This is a handprint, isn't it? That cloth, it had fingerprints on it. Whoever fingerprints those are must be the real murderer. What? But those fingerprints, they're yours, Emma. Why are your lips turning all purple, Mr. Wright? Anyway, let's get on with the cross-examination. So long as you tell the truth, we should be able to flush out the real murderer. Very well. The defense may now begin its cross-examination. Hmm. Ah. Uh, I don't know. Oh, what? What the heck? Who? Oh my god, he's back again. Dude! Well, you know, it's for the best because I had no clue what to even press on there, but... Really? You were supposed to be going on your lunch date. It's like you never even left. Come now, Audrey. This is the poorest excuse for a trial I've ever seen. Chief Gant. What? Now you want to make me out as the bad guy too? If so, I'd like to put in a word or two in my defense. I'm afraid it's too late for that. What? He already declined to testify. Ooh, is he not allowed to anymore? That means you've forfeited your right to make statements of any sort. <laughs> Take that, you jerk. This must be that risk we were talking about earlier. Yes. Just sit back, relax, and enjoy the sound of the noose tightening around your neck. <laughs> is he going to do it again? I know it. I hate you. Ah, so what? You think I'm worried? You looked pretty worried for a second there. Sorry to disappoint you, but I don't need to make any statements. What do you mean? The evidence will do all the talking for me. Even if I can't testify, I can still present evidence. Yes, that's true. Wait, you mean you still have some conclusive evidence? No, I don't, but someone does. Someone. Oh god, is he talking about the cloth that I have? So, what's your excuse, Rido? Why have you been keeping quiet about it? You do have something to show us, right? Oh god. Something that proves who knocked over Neil Marshall causing his death. Inclusive evidence that leaves no room for doubt. Is this true, Mr. Wright? Uh If I show that piece of evidence now, I'm as sure to be made out as the murderer. Mr. Wright, if you have any more evidence, present it now. And if you try to conceal anything, you will be the one appearing before the Board of Inquiries. What do I do now? I better think this through carefully. I can't afford to make the wrong decision. Should I present that piece of evidence? The one that shows who really killed Prosecutor Marshall? Uh, I can't show it yet. Maybe it could be like, it's not time for that yet. Your Honor, I don't have any evidence I can present at this point in time. What? You lie. Chief Gant. You, you opened my safe. I know you took what was inside. The conclusive evidence. I don't know what you're talking about. Mr. Wright, why don't you show them? We found it together. Oh, I see. It's because you know the truth, don't you? You know whose fingerprints are on it. That's why you won't present it. What are you talking about, Chief Gant? Can't you figure it out? Take a good look at this picture. See the victim's vest? Notice anything odd about the chest area? It looks like a part of it's been cut out for some reason. 
You mean you had this in your safe? What? That means you, chief of police. Ah, you play yourself. I've been concealing evidence. This is going to be the biggest scandal in the history of the police department. Oh, it's about to get much bigger, judge. <laughs> you played yourself. Impressive. To be honest, I didn't think you had the gall, righto. Well, I can't just let you pin me up as the murderer. I'll tell you what really happened. What? You mean, you admit it. I was the first person to arrive at the crime scene that day. It then occurred to me that I could use the situation to control Lana. So you really were manipulating her? I knew Lana. I made it look like the blame li lay with her sister. That when she saw the scene, she would ask for my- ask me for my aid. So you assisted Miss Sky. I told her to arrange the ev all the evidence. I had her plant the knife tip in the victim's body and move the body across the room. No, I ended up using that evidence to get Joe Doc convicted. When I tampered with the crime scene, I had two pieces of evidence. This was before Lana arrived at the scene, mind you. Two pieces of evidence. You mean those items in your safe? But why? For insurance. Of course. Insurance. I was sure my plan would work, but it's always best to be prepared for the worst. I wasn't about to let anyone blame me for a murder that a girl committed. You mean you were calculating that far ahead while forging the evidence? What do you take me for? A fool? I didn't make police, Chief, by look by dumb luck. You kind of are a fool. You keep playing yourself right now. See this jar fragment? I hid the most legible part of Emma's name. I didn't expect Lana. Go and wipe the blood off all the pieces. If you fabricated all the evidence, what's to say you didn't fabricate the message on this jaw, too? Exactly! Ho ho ho! Some people just don't know when to quit, do they? That's why I kept one more item for insurance. You mean that piece of cloth? Come on, Rido. Cough it up already. I know you have it. What are you waiting for, Mr. Wright? So you admit to it then, Chief Gant. That you were hiding the cloth you cut off the victim's vest in your safe. Yes, I admit it. I didn't want to have to do that, but uh, being chief and all. But it's a lot better than being portrayed as a murderer. Well, Mr. Wright, what do you have to say for yourself? Just a moment ago, you said you didn't have any evidence you could present. Foolish move, Righto. You should have done it then before it was too late. I was waiting for the right moment, Judge. It's been a long battle. But the moment of truth has finally arrived. As long as I don't mess up here, victory is mine. I'm guessing I have to show it now? Your Honor, I do have evidence to present now. All right then, let's see this conclusive evidence. I can't wait to see it. The evidence that shows who actually murdered Prosecutor Marshall. Okay, there it is. Here you go! Let me verify this once more. On the day of the crime, you personally cut out this piece of the victim's vest. Oh, yes. At least you finally brought it out into the open. Well, wait a minute, wouldn't your prints be on it if you cut it out too? There's a handprint on this piece of cloth. Your Honor, the prosecution requests that to be immediately sent to the lab for analysis. His handprint on the leather. There must have been a strong impact for it to be left so clearly. You mean... It could not have been forged. It must be authentic, conclusive evidence. Ho ho ho. You're as slow on the uptake as ever, Worthy. What? Think about it. Righto had all, all this time to present this evidence. Yet he was reluctant to do so. Why would that be? You mean you already know? You know whose fingerprints are on that? Mr. Wright, do you really know? Whoever the fingerprints belong to must be the real murderer. Unless it was planted. Like he shoved her hand on it or something. Whose fingerprints are they? 
Very well. I'll tell you. It should be okay now. Everything's proceeding as predicted. Okay, he... He has it all figured out. So I'm just gonna roll with it. He seems to, like... You know... The person who... The person who's these... The person whom these fingerprints belong to is... Emma. He's very confident, though, that, like, this proves stuff about Gant. Emma? Emma Sky? What? They're mine? I'm sorry, Emma. But why? Why didn't you tell me? Oh ho ho! You're really something, Reto. You knew this girl did it all along, and you still tried to pin the murder on me. So it's true. Tragic, but true. This girl really did shove Prosecutor Marshall to his death. I don't think so. I've got something, don't I? No, Lana does, apparently. How could you, you, you monster? This guy. You knew whose fingerprints those were all along, yet you, you acted like she really didn't. No, no, I, I got something. I don't know what it is, but I swear I've got something. Miss Guy, it's not over yet. What? I said this trial isn't over yet. Ha, huh, but I'm afraid it is over, boy. Not only this trial, but your career, too. You purposely concealed this conclusive evidence. That, my friend, is a serious offense. I'm looking forward to pressing charges after the defendant is convicted. You just keep yapping. I've got something, don't I? I'll have your badge, boy. What's the matter? Cat got your tongue. Aren't you going to tell us how it feels? How it feels to be the one who single-handedly turned a poor little girl into a murderer? Before I do that, there's just one little thing I have to clear up. Oh, and what's that? Who really killed Prosecutor Neil Marshall? I got something. I got something. What? Chief Gant, you are absolutely right. This piece of cloth proves who the real murderer is. Who killed Neil Marshall, you ask? It was Emma Sky, wasn't it? I thought we'd just established that. I'm afraid that's not possible. You see, this piece of cloth contains a critical contradiction. What? A contradiction? My guess is that, like, shouldn't your prints be on it? If you cut it out? What is this fool blabbing about? I'm talking about a contradiction. One that proves who the real killer is. Mr. Wright, this piece of cloth, what could it possibly contradict? Chief Gant, your tyrannical reign end ends here. Oh yes. What have you got, Phoenix? Behold, the piece of evidence that contradicts this cloth. Oh god, wait, I... I have to figure it out myself? Oh wait. Is it this that we just got? Uh... I feel like it's gotta be this picture that we just got. I don't know how it is, but I'm just gonna try it. <laughs> Cause I don't know what else it can be. And what exactly is this supposed to be? This is the picture Miss Sky took. Take a good look at it. See where the piece of his vest was cut out? Yes, his shirt is showing underneath. It's a very nice shirt, white. It would look better without all the blood on it. I would wear it. It's hard to make out with all the blood on his vest, though. Exactly my point. His chest is soaked with blood. That's only natural. There's no blood on the piece of the vest. That's what it is. His lungs no doubt were punctured. Blood poured out of his mouth. So... Hmm. When was, the, when was it cut, then? Oh. But that piece of cloth... Wait, there's no blood on it. Uh, since Emma Sky's fingerprints are on this cloth, there's no doubt that she shoved the prosecutor aside. But that didn't kill him. That's not what put him on there. However, Mr. Marshall was not impaled on the sword at that time. No, th this is nonsense. Now then, Chief Gant, let me ask you something. Prosecutor Marshall was not impaled when he was shoved aside. He most likely hit his head on the ground and was knocked out. 
And so then Gant probably came in and cut it off. He killed him himself. That's so brutal. Was it all just so he could have a pawn? If so, then tell me. Who could it have been? Who could have arrived at the scene before Ms. Lana Sky picked up the unconscious prosecutor and impaled him on the armor's sword? Berg! And to make it look like Emma was responsible for the prosecutor's death, said person proceeded to write her name on the jar with the victim's blood. A jar that they then broke on purpose to leave behind a clue. And make Lana believe her sister did it. Remember what you admitted only moments ago. That you personally cut out the bloodless piece of the victim's vest. Ironic, isn't it? Through the very act of creating insurance, you proved that you were the actual murderer. Boom. Eat it. Take that. <laughs> no! God, that's so scary looking. It's finally all over. What? <laughs> oh, look, now you're all sad. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, ho, ho, ho. That was close, Rido. You almost had me. Sorry, but you'll have to do better than that. I refute your allegations. What do you mean you refute his allegations? Can you do that? You see, that piece of cloth is legal evidence. You're the one that kept bringing it up. Oh, am I gonna have to use the evidence law? Order, order. What nonsense is this? Legal evidence cannot be used to convict a suspect, isn't it? Like, if it, if it, that one evidence law, wasn't it, like, if it's relevant to the case? Remember, Aji? Earlier, old Rido here concealed that piece of, of cloth. So then, what's your excuse, Rido? You do have some conclusive evidence, don't you? Your Honor, I don't have any evidence I can present at this, at this point in time. Well, that's true. The defense did refuse to present the evidence. At that moment, that piece of cloth ceased to be legal evidence. But that's not fair. Ho oh, ho ho ho! Did you actually think you could best me in court? Yeah, and I'm going to yet with evidence law. Looks like the last laugh's on you, son. I'm afraid Mr. Gant's claim is legally correct. Correct. Well, Mr. Edgeworth. True, legal evidence cannot be used to convict a person. Assuming, of course, that the evidence is indeed illegal. Yes! Oh, Edgeworth, you're so cool. Mm? Well, Mr. Wright. It seems at last. The time for me to reveal my plan has finally arrived. Mr. Wright, do you admit to it? Did you purposefully and illegally conceal this piece of cloth? I did not. I admit, I refuse to present it at one point. Aha, uh -huh. so the evidence is illegal. She wasn't the right time yet. No, it isn't, Mr. Gant. Huh? It's not that I didn't present the evidence then. It's that I couldn't. Oh, no, it's... Oh! Is it that it didn't become relevant to the case until then? Oh... What do you mean you couldn't? I had it backwards. With the evidence law. I thought it was like, oh, I can present it because it's relevant, but it's like I couldn't present it until that point. Because it wasn't relevant until then, I think. There are certain procedures involved when presenting evidence. No, Uji, don't listen to the to his lies. He's nothing but a coward. You can't really believe. There is only one issue left to be resolved in this trial. Is this evidence legal or not? Very well. Let us settle this once and for all. Earlier, you refused to present evidence. If you can provide your conduct was not in violation of the law, then do so now. No evidence shall be shown without the... Okay, no, it's unregistered evidence presented must be relevant to the case on trial. It's gotta be that. It wasn't relevant until then. This is my proof, Your Honor. Evidence law. What's this? I've done my homework too, Chief. Indeed, Emma Sky's fingerprints were on this piece of cloth. However, at that point in time, this was merely a piece of cloth, nothing more. What? 
You see, it's written right here in this book. The second law, the second rule of evidence law. Rule number one, your evidence shall be shown without the approval of the police department. I found this piece of evidence myself, inside your safe. It goes without saying, I did not have approval from the police department. Rule number two, unregistered evidence presented must be relevant to the case on trial. And here's the crux of the matter. You see, at the time, it was impossible for me to prove the relevance between the cloth and the SL9 incident. What? What kind of nonsense is this? You want relevancy? Just take one look at this picture and- Objection! Sorry, but can you recall? When was that picture presented? That was shown only a few moments ago. Yup. No. He's right. At the beginning of today's trial, that piece of cloth was still meaningless. The person who gave it value as evidence was you, idiot. Was you, Damon Gant. Haha. <laughs> you played yourself again. You yourself confessed to a certain truth. Let me verify this once more. On the day of the crime, you personally cut out this piece of the victim's vest. Oh, yes. Ah, yes, that feels so good. No. It was then that you approved this cloth as conclusive evidence. Yes, you, the chief of police, personally approved this cloth. The only person who could have cut this from the victim's vest is the one who stood before Prosecutor Marshall in his final moments. In other words, the real murderer. And there's only one person who that could be. Damon Gant. The killer was you. N n oomph. Wahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahah
um, it just hit me. So why did he kill Neil? What was the reasoning for that? Was it just because he wanted to definitely make sure Joe Dark was sentenced? So we made him like guilty of another crime? I, why did he do it? I broke your trunk, but what's the big deal? You make a lot more than us detectives ever will. Gah. <sighs> that car wasn't cheap, and the trunk won't be cheap to fix either. Ugh, I hate this job sometimes. Leaving the prosecution's car aside, my poor car! How? How could you get Miss Skye involved in all of this? Well, she had as much to lose as I did if the truth came out. So you took the evidence from Detective Goodman's locker? I felt bad for having to do it. I also didn't have the time to pick and choose what to take. So, you left the jar fragments and the glove. Yeah. Looks like I was better off being an, inv an investigator of crimes than a, than a committer. They all did their best to get in my way. I've gotta hand it to them. They do their jobs well, much to my dismay. Fake evidence doesn't hold up very well close upon close examination. You must have known that. Tell me, Worthy. Why do you stand in court? Me? You despise criminals. I can feel it. You and me. We're the same. But you are a criminal. One day you'll understand. You too will commit a crime in a fit of rage. No, no, I don't think I will. Oh, believe me, you will. No, I won't. You're just one man. You have to commit a crime. No, I'm not going to commit murder. You'll see what it really takes to bring them down once you try to go to go it alone. Well, looks like it's time to say goodbye. Oh, Udgy. What? what? Looks like we'll have to cancel that lunch date. Sorry, old friend. I'm sorry too, Damon Gant. We could have had something beautiful. I will turn my eyes back to Phoenix Wright. I don't know why I ever strayed in the first place. Judge! No! I knew you as you used to be long ago. You were once a fine investigator and an example to others on the force. I'm sorry to learn that you are no longer that person. Those days are gone now, Udgy. Thanks for all the memories, though. Don't worry, you'll be fine. Now you have Raido here. I, I've i been fine for a long time without you. I have my judge's wacky court with Phoenix Wright and Miles Edgeworth and my wacky audience and my Mahjong team. Who could forget about them? And Worthy. With these two around, you can't go wrong. In fact, I can hear them already. The melodious sounds of a new beginning. But why... Why did you kill Neil? Did I miss that part? These are two things I want you to understand. Yes. First, your sister never hurt anyone. Second, Damon Gant betrayed you from the beginning. You see, Miss Guy, you no longer have any reason to keep silent. You're right. When this trial is over, I'll tell everything. All that I've done these past two years. From the time I had Gant help me for forge evidence up until today. So, it seems all the questions raised in this trial have been answered. Except why did he kill him in the first place? Was it literally just to make Lana his pawn? I don't know. I'm sorry, Miss Guy. I couldn't get you out of all your trouble. My my. What high standards you have for a rookie. I can see why Mia thought so highly of you. Who knows, a few years from now, you just might make it to the top. Wow, you're smiling! Wow! It's never happened! I owe you my thanks, Mr. Wright. Yeah, you're still gonna be in some trouble, because you did, you know, you knew Damon Gant killed uh, Goodman, and you, you stabbed the knife in, and you tried to cover it up. And, the, you know, the ev evidence forging, and... But, you know, you're, you're not gonna be convicted of murder. This guy. And you too, Mr. Edgeworth. 
You've suffered every bit as much as I have over these past few days. Believe me, I know how much of an ordeal it's been for you. Pimp. It, it was nothing. Liar. <laughs> oh, Edward, you're such a sundere. I was worried the pressure might break you. And yet, you rose above it all and guided Mr. Wright to victory. You've done well, Mr. Edgeworth. Stop it. I only did my job. In light of this case, it seems a good self-examining is in order for all of us. This guy. Yes, Your Honor. You are innocent of murder. However, although the chief blackmailed you, the fact is you still acted as his accomplice. A trial will be scheduled for these crimes at a later date. Yes, I understand, Your Honor. Is there something amusing about all of this? You're still guilty. Why are you smiling? It's been a long time, Your Honor. A long time since I felt... Since I felt free of these heavy chains. You don't have to be cold anymore. Well, this trial has gone on far too long already. Like, dear God. Three parts in this trial? Like, this, this one just kept going. It was very, very, very long. I'm late for Mahjong. Again! Can you all believe it? We have went through this entire game and I've never made it to Mahjong on time once. <sighs> it's all your fault. All of you. You're never giving the correct testimonies and the murderer is always never, you know, the person that we think it is. <sighs> Regarding the charge of murder, this court finds the defendant in Lana Sky. Not guilty. Release the confetti. Yay. You've done it again, Phoenix Wright. I love you. That is all. This court is adjourned. Goodbye, Judge. See you in the next game. I'm off to Mahjong. Oh, 5.03 p.m. I'm late. At long last, it's finally over. Uh, Emma? Hey, can we acknowledge the fact that you read my mind? Why the long face? I'm sorry your sister didn't get completely off, completely off the hook. But at least she wasn't convicted of a murder she didn't commit. No, that's not it. Just now, after the trial ended... I can see why Mia Fei thought so highly of you. I owe you my thanks, Mr. Wright. And to you too, Mr. Edgeworth. You've suffered every bit as much as I have over these past few days. You've done well. You know, I did my best too. <laughs> she didn't- Oh, Yeah, she didn't say anything to you. <laughs> but- Lana didn't say a single word to me. Hope I'm not interrupting anything, pals. Not again, I got you. Oh. Guess I am. I'll come back later. <laughs> Third time? And then he sadly leaves. Wait, Detective Gumshoe, what is it? You're doing this on purpose, aren't you? Making a detective run all around while on duty. And to top it all off, you call me here. I've seen happier people at funerals. <laughs> Third time we've gone through this dialogue. Hey, lighten up, pals. I'm only kidding. Oh, are you here because of my sister again? Nope, not this time. I came today because of you, pal. Me? That's right. I thought you'd like to see someone. Oh, she's gonna acknowledge you now. Lana. Should you be doing this? She's still under arrest, you know. Well, I won't tell if you won't. Emma, I owe you an apology. It's okay, sis. Don't worry about it. That day, two years ago, was the first time in my life I ever panicked. It was all I could do to keep myself from screaming. All I could think about was keeping you from getting wrapped up in that mess. Sis, I asked Gant to help me cover up the truth. I thought I was doing it for your sake. But now, I realize I was wrong. I changed after that day. Have you seen this picture of me? Didn't we look so cool? I had to. It was the only way I could make it through the past two years. I knew how much I was hurting you by distancing myself. But I couldn't bring myself to tell you what I did. I... I was scared. Scared that you'd look at me with those eyes of yours. I was scared of how you'd react if you knew. But sis, you were only doing it for me. No. Huh? 
I turned my back on you that day. In hiding what I believed to be the truth, I was deceiving you. Sis. I'm such a fool. It took me all this time to realize it. Emma, I'm so sorry. But sis, you don't have to apologize. I'm happy now. You're happy? Of course. You know, sis, I always knew that one day you'd come back. And now you have. You're not a cold bitch anymore. <laughs> oh, Emma. Emma. Hooray. Oh, so happy. A happy ending. Woo. No one can change the past. The only thing we can do is strive to make up for our mistakes. Why must we make up for our mistakes, you ask? Because in doing so, we can find the way back to our rightful path. And it is from there that we can move on toward a brighter future. So like Emma, you can read my mind. At least that's what I felt watching the two sisters make up. Mr. Wright, Mr. Gumshoe. M me Thank you both for all that you've done. I'm sure we'll meet again someday. Isn't that right, Edgeworth? <gasps> Edgeworth! You hiding around? Where are you at, my darling? Uh, Edgeworth. Stop hiding and come over here. You're such a tsundere. Oh my god, you're so cute. <laughs> I love you. Oh my god. Where was he hiding? Behind the couch. Oh. I just came to say congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. Right, so... Uh, I'll be going now. I miss you already. Mr. Edgeworth, I hope you don't blame yourself for what happened. You were the ones who acted corruptly, not you. It's too late for me. No matter what anyone may say, I realize today that I can't corrupt my, I can't correct my mistakes. Mr. Edgeworth? Not only that, but I don't even trust myself anymore. Chief Gant was right. You despise criminals. I can feel it. You and me, we're the same. One day, you'll understand. Oh, believe me, you will. You're just one man. You'll see what it really takes to bring them down once you try to go it alone. I do despise criminals. I plan to dedicate my entire life to fighting them. But in order to fight crime on my own, I'd need a weapon. It's scary, but I've known that to be true for quite some time now. But Edgeworth... Who knows? Given enough time, I might have tried to pull something like Chief Gant did. That thought terrifies me. That's why I can't continue on as a prosecutor- No! Edgeworth, do you don't you understand? Demon Gant in and your mentor, Monfred von Karma. We're both the best of the best when it came to fighting crime, but they both made the same mistake. You said in order to fight crime on my own, I'd need a weapon. That may be true, but think back to today's trial. You weren't alone. You had me! You are working together with Mr. Wright, and because of that partnership, you were able to present evidence that otherwise would have gone undiscovered. Isn't that right, Mr. Wright? Oh, uh, what? Oh, uh, yeah. What is this, a pop quiz? Come on, Mr. Wright, show what Lana's talking about. Evidence, huh? Something that neither Edgeworth nor I would have been able to find on our own. Is it my donut? <laughs> I, I show him the blue badger. I couldn't have found the blue badger without on our own. It's my donut. might mean something to you. I don't see how it had anything to do with our partnership. Huh? Mr. Wright, it seems you still have a lot to learn as well. I guess that wasn't the right piece of evidence. Aw, I thought it was my donut. Maybe, oh, maybe it is. It's time for me to go. Mr. Edgeworth, if you'll excuse me, there are still some loose ends that need wrapping up. Take care, Chief Prosecutor. Edgeworth, I miss you already! Edgeworth, what will you do now? Well, whatever you do, just remember. You can let what happened... You 
can let what happened kill the prosecutor in you. Or you can let it help you grow. In the end, it's up to you. The, ju the judge's wacky court won't be the same without you. I know. It seems I owe you my thanks too, right? But what I face now is my problem. Edgeworth, I'll be waiting for you in court. In judge's wacky court. Farewell. Again, again, I miss you already! I better be going too. Okay, but I'll be by to visit soon. It seems we both have a lot to learn and catching up to do. Here, this is a little something for you. Why do you have all these picture books about this stuff? The duck. Scientific investigation. It's the first book I ever bought. Study it well. Thanks, sis. I will. And so, another case came to a close. As for the sisters, I have faith. We're really not going to acknowledge the fact that Emma kept reading my mind. Oh my god. Faith that their lives have only just begun. And as for me, I think it's time I started on a new journey of my own. Look, it's everyone! Oh, Edward! I like that you were the last one and you were the center. Journey to rediscover myself. Well, don't go trekking off just yet, pal. Huh? Wh what is it, detective? I was having an emotional inner monologue. Just a little matter to be resolved about the chief prosecutor. You see, she isn't supposed to be out of jail like this. But... I thought you said it was okay. Yeah, well, it may be okay with me, but the folks at the prison are a different story. Huh? Basically, I had to bribe a guard in order to sneak her out for 30 minutes. Believe me, it wasn't cheap either. Huh? Way to go, detective. I didn't know you had had a, a wild side. Yeah, well, huh. you see, Mr. Wright here is the one who will be footing the bill. Hey! Huh? Huh? What, you think I can afford it with my salary? You gotta be kidding me, pal. I didn't ask you to do it. Huh? 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 Thank you, Mr. Wright. You're the best. I... I didn't ask for this. Why is it... I suddenly feel like I want to scream? Hey, I got an idea. Why don't we all go pay it off together? Yeah, that's a great idea. Come on, guys. Let's go. <laughs> Aw. <laughs> the way it ended with an objection. Well? Okay, we get more. Like last time. I arranged for a friend to take care of... Uh, wait, what? I hope she'll be pleased to study under a top coroner. As for me, this affair has pretty much ended my days at the prosecutor's office. Still, I'll manage to find my way back to the field somehow. Then, I'll be able to investigate crimes together with Emma. I missed that first line because it went too fa fast. Did you say you sent Emma somewhere to study? I would assume so. First, you auto-advancing dialogue. Yikes, I thought I was a goner for a moment there. In the end, though, they overlooked my unauthorized investigation of the chief's office. If we penalized you anymore, it'd be worse than firing you. Yep, that's what they said. This goes to show, you can't shake me off that easily. Yay, gumshoe! I'm glad that you get to keep your job. Gumshoe grew on me over this game. Throughout, or throughout this game. He's just, I don't know, he's just kind of like a... Adorable. He's an idiot. He's just like a bi he's like a big teddy bear. Beacons. My new mission is to guard the main entrance and take care of Billy. Can you believe it? I've been demoted to a security guard. My partner's keeping an eye on the entrance for me today. I'll show them though. Someday I'm going to make detective. Yes, sir. Then I can be like that dick gumshoe. Whatever you say, Meekins. You're a bit silly, so... I don't know if you're gonna be a detective. That would be crazy in a later game. Meekins is a detective. <laughs> um... Uh... Oh, no! 
no! The blue badger died! I like that we got an after, like, credit scene for the blue badger. His epilogue is that he died. Granted, I mean, he just, he just keeps going. He won't stop dancing. He finally gave out. What is it? Can't you see I'm having me a showdown with a steak lunch partner? Miss Star managed to sneak this into me. She's seen one of the guards, it seems. Well, cowboy, looks like you did it. You even gave Bambina back her smile. Can you make sure Billy and the gang get their water? Looks like we won't be seeing each other for a while. As a farewell gift, I put a new meal on the menu. The right way lunch. The top layer tastes as bitter as defeat, but the bottom layer is as sweet as victory. Kids seem to dig up, dig the turnabout theme. It's a hot cellar. Just make sure not to eat it backwards. Okay, Angel. Okay, I literally had to look it up. I was like, they keep mentioning Billy. Who's that? It's his cactus. <laughs> I was like, who's Billy? Judge! I'll never forget what that young defense lawyer said after that trial. Let's see what his name is. Let's see, what was his name again? Mr. Left. Anyway, he said he's been doing a something or other for uh, how many years? Well, anyway, I've got another trial to get to, so I'd better be... Huh? Oh, no. I forgot my gavel. Sorry, got to go. Gonna be late for this trial and for Mahjong. I'm talking about me, by the way. There's no way Judge would ever forget Mr. Wright. He loves him. He's a valuable member of Judge's wacky court. I love that this game has two credits. <laughs> two credit sequences. <gasps> Maya! Ah! Nothing soothes the soul like fresh country air. Still, sometimes I do miss hearing you and your objection. Still, I can't go back until I'm a full-fledged spirit medium. Mystic Maya, afternoon trainings about to begin. Coming. Well, see you around, Nick. Oh, yay. I'm so glad we got to see Maya one last time. I, is she going to be like with me in the second game? I hope so. I want Maya back. I miss her. Hello, Edgeworth. Are you here? Mr. Edgeworth. Oh, Mr. Edgeworth. Uh, Mr. Edgeworth. I brought you your tea. Is he not here? What's going on? I love the bellboy keeps co coming back. <laughs> we got to make it into the credits again. Just as long as old bag doesn't show up again. Thanks for coming to see me off. I can't believe I'm going to Europe. Okay, yeah, that's what, what I was talking about. Thank you, Mr. Wright. Thank you so much for everything. I'm a little sad, but I'll be all right. Whenever I want to see Lana, all I have to do is open this book. Why do I keep opening it from the back? Whoops, I didn't want to zoom in. Aw, cute. <laughs> How long are you gonna make me stare at it though is the question. We don't get to see what Edgeworth's note was with the bellboy? Okay, is that, is that really gonna be it? Man. Okay. We did it. We have officially finished the first Ace Attorney game. Okay. This is usually the portion in my Let's Plays where I give my thoughts on the game as a whole. I really liked it. It's so goofy. Um, and it's very funny. 
but it's also at the same time, like the cases are actually like really interesting and they're very fun to solve. And there's actually like some very like decent, like touching writing, like all the stuff with Edgeworth and you know, like Maya, Mia, even though, you know, the whole like spirit medium thing is kind of weird. All the stuff with like Emma and Lana, like that was like really interesting and well-written. Now, I do think that the original ending of the game was probably a better ending of the game. It just felt I don't, like a better wrap up and with those credits as well. And it was just, you know, it was focused on Phoenix, Edgeworth, Maya, all them. Those or original like characters that we had throughout the entire story. I, I would say overall, I, th even though this last chapter was really long, I did like it, even though it hurt my brain. It was, it was very confusing to figure out. Um, yeah, I thought it was an interesting case overall. And Emma, she's no Maya. But like she was interesting and the whole thing with Lana was too. It's just because they, this last chapter, they introduced all these like new characters and then had the wrap up with them too. I don't know, it just, it didn't feel, it didn't hold the same weight for me as the first credits scene did. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm a little annoyed that we're not acknowledging the fact that Emma can read my mind. You know what, I'm gonna Google this right now. <laughs> Since it didn't come up in the game. Did, has anyone else noticed the fact that Emma can read your mind? Did Maya do that? I swear to God, she didn't. Emma mind reading. Please tell me someone else. Is Emma a sky a mind reader? Let's see, this is a Reddit post. I think it's just that Phoenix is speaking in a low voice and Emma is, has good hearing. Is that what it is? He talks, okay. So apparently she's not a mind reader. Phoenix is just talking under his breath. Okay, it's supposed to be Phoenix's inner thoughts and yet so many characters are able to hear them at certain times, but most of the time, no one can hear the thoughts. Although we interpret the blue text in brackets as thought, it is actually supposed to be a whisper. Okay, really? Okay, well, that didn't happen for the first four chapters of the game. Like, Emma never did that. Or not, I keep getting confused now. Maya never did that. But then Emma, all of a sudden, in this chapter, she's always, like, responding to that. And apparently, she's not a mind reader. I'm just talking under my breath. I never did that before. Ugh. At least I don't remember it. <laughs> okay, well, that answers that question. I'd say my favorite chapter overall, obviously, was for the whole Edgeworth case. I love Edgeworth. And it, overall, with the plot, I liked how, like, we, we heard about the DL6 incident early on, and then, like, it came back and was important later. And, like, things in the third case. Oh, with the Steel Samurai, like, I forget, honestly, I forget how. But st stuff with that, we ended up, like, referencing it in the fourth case to, like, figure stuff out. Um, it all ended up being important to the overall plot in the end. My favorite character, very obviously, Edgeworth. I love Edgeworth so much. Oh my god, he's such a Sundari. He's so cute. I love his character and like everything with chapter four. You know, I loved all of that, learning about him and his motivations. I love that him and Phoenix are like frenemies now. It's very cute. I love when we work together. He's so freaking cool too. I just, oh, I love him. <laughs> I'm, I am curious as to like what's going to happen with his character now. Like, because again, that wasn't that chapter wasn't in the original game. So with him like leaving and the stuff with Gant getting to him. Now, I don't know if he's in the second game, which is actually makes me very sad. I know this isn't the end of Edgeworth. I know he comes up. I'm pretty sure I've heard that he's in the third game for sure. Um, I don't know if he's in the second game at all. We're gonna have different uh, prosecutors in the coming games, which makes me sad. Oh, Edgeworth. But I, I hope we can at least see him. Like, I hope he makes at least an appearance in the second game. I would love that. But yeah, I also, re I really liked Maya. I, I I did. I liked her a lot. She was just so sweet and cute. Like, she's just like a little sister. And I hope we get more of her in the future games too. I like Phoenix. He's funny. I like him as a protagonist. The judge cracks me up, but that's... <laughs> Not to toot my own horn, but I think that's just because of what I did to him. <laughs> like, I just... I don't know, the voice that I gave him, and then I, I don't know where the, I don't know, I, the freaking recesses and Mahjong and him being in love with Phoenix, and I don't know what I ha what happened there, but I mean, I hope he continues to be the judge, because I'm gonna keep it going. <laughs> okay, if you watch my Dandelion Let's Play, when I would voice the wizard, you know how I would like get into like a certain like headspace? It was like, I don't know what would happen to me. I just became the wizard. I feel like that's what happens with me and the judge. Like I voice the judge and just the weirdest stuff comes out of my mouth. And I, <laughs> some of it, I don't even process until after I said it. I'm like, what the heck was that? I feel like that about sums it up. Yeah, as you can see, this game is the Ace Attorney trilogy. So I'm just gonna be go booting this game back up. New game, start the second one next time, which will be next week. So yeah, 
you don't have to worry about waiting for that. Uh, next Monday, we're gonna start the second game. I think I've determined that I'm just gonna, you know, make a new playlist for the second game and the third game. And then, you know, we'll we'll start over with the numbering and the thumbnails and stuff. So next, the next one will be, you know, episode one. We'll say that in the thumbnail and everything. Uh, but yeah, I would love to hear your thoughts on the game, whether you played it before or this was your first time experiencing it with me. What's your favorite chapter? Who's your favorite character? Um, which of the Ace Attorney trilogy is your favorite? You know, like which one should I be looking forward to? Is it this one? Is it like the second or the third one? Let me know. I would love to hear your thoughts. So yeah, that is another completed Let's Play in the books, guys, even though we're really not done with Ace Attorney. I hope you guys enjoyed this game as much as I did. It was so much fun. And I look forward to seeing you all next week for the second game. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and go. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.